what's going on YouTube? It's Lucas here. Thanks so much for checking out my video and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about mixing vocals to get that really crispy high fidelity vocal sound. I get questions about this all the time so I'm super excited to talk about it and I'm going to pretty much walk you through everything in Ableton as well so it should be sweet. Before I get into it, um, check out my website if you're looking for sessions or lessons and also free Ableton presets. I got a bunch of stuff there on the store that's for free and paid on the website so go ahead and check that out. So before I get into mixing the vocals that we have for today's example, I just wanted to talk about a couple things because vocals are a very uh, nuanced and complicated topic. It can, they can really vary depending on your taste and depending on the singer and the type of music that you're working on. But generally speaking, in my experience, the order of importance, number one is the vocalist. So uh, obviously having a great singer is the most important thing. Number two is actually the room. So that's the most commonly misunderstood um, aspect of, of recording. In my experience, it seems like people have a really hard time understanding how acoustics and reverberance and stuff like that works. But generally speaking, uh, we have rooms that are more live and have a lot of reverberance, and then rooms that are much uh, more treated, kind of like an ISO booth at a studio that are dead. And you may want to record vocals in one of those particular types of environments, depending on the genre, depending on your taste. But in general, if you're working at home or in a suboptimal environment, you may not have a huge amount of control over the sound of the room, although you can get acoustic panels and things like that if you're willing to make the investment to uh, make the room sound a little bit better. But I would recommend not recording in closets. In my experience, uh, vocals recorded in closets have not been very pleasant to listen to and more work to mix. So I think having a, a more normal sized room is really helpful. And uh, getting acoustic treatment, if you can, if you can do that, is a, is a huge uh, step forward. So not everyone has access to uh, really nice studios where they have the rooms perfectly acoustically treated for recording. But the microphone picks up the sound of the voice and the sound of the room as well. And the room really comes through. The more effects that you add on top of it, like compression and things like that, you'll pick up more room sound in that vocal. So if your room sound is good, it's going to really help your vocal sound. And it's totally. Um, totally underrated how important that is. So I can't stress that enough. By the way, if you have any questions on some of these topics, I'm going to kind of go over them really quickly, but I'm more than happy to make more videos about more specific things like this. Number three is actually the microphone. So there's a ton of different microphones out there, but you can get great quality vocals for under $1,000. So, uh, you know, do your research and there's different mics. Some sound very neutral, others sound hyped at certain frequencies. Some mics are better for certain types of singers. So it's a really complicated equation, but there's no, there's some great technology out there right now. There's a lot of affordable options, so you can get a great sounding vocals pretty much on any budget. You don't necessarily have to have, you know, a $3,000 microphone. So that's really important. And lastly, which ironically is the main topic for this video, is like engineering and mixing techniques. Uh, so the first uh, engineering aspect is actually mic technique, which is also not that uh, frequently discussed. So the distance from the singer to the microphone and things like that are actually really important for your vocal sound. So I noticed that singers really want to hear themselves very well. So they get really, really close to the mic and it starts to sound muffled and boxy. So we want to avoid things like that by using a pop filter and just making sure using the correct mic technique then we get into you know mic preamps outboard gear so if you have the luxury of, of using those um, you know analog equipment like compressors and mic preamps and things like that that does really improve your vocal sound and um, you know but it may not be a huge deal breaker you can still get an amazing sound with just in the box stuff so lastly what we're going to be talking about is actually plugins and digital signal processing in the DAW so we're going to hop right into it here so I've bypassed all my plugins I'm going to walk you through my vocal setup for this particular example so here's what the vocal sounds like right now last time was all in won't fall for promises love sickness over this okay so that's Lexi her links in the description and we basically recorded on this mic, it's U87, through an Avalon, which is a mic preamp compressor and EQ all in one channel strip. And I do have compression going in because I like doing that. Uh, not overly compressed, just a little bit of compression. And I also have the EQ, it's, boosted, it's boosting 10K. So we do have EQ and compression going in. I like to compress in stages. Some engineers feel differently about that. Some people want to just slam the compressor, but I like to have incremental compression. So we'll get into that in a second. But um, the first thing that I noticed that we really need to do is uh, EQing. So I like to have a cleanup EQ. And if you notice, the way that I have this set up is I have my verse vocal channel right here, and then I have it grouped into a bus, which has all my lead vocals. I've cleaned the session up a little bit just for the sake of making this video a little easier, but 
and shorter. But the first thing that we need to do is we need a cleanup EQ. So I'm going to use FabFilter Pro Q. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop out these uh, like sort of low mid frequencies. So I, I basically found some resonances that I didn't like and pulled them down by about minus six dB and also pulled the lows out as well. You can use your stock EQs. You can use any EQ. Actually, Massenberg EQ is a bunch of plugins that you could use. Waves, um, Ableton, Pro Tools, all of them have great EQs. I like FabFilter because it's just super easy to use. Yeah, and I'm just used to it, so um, I'm not boosting anything, not doing anything crazy. We're just trimming some mid-range, and that's just because I noticed that I hear like some boxy sounding frequencies, so I'll show you what that sounds like with it, with an on and off. So here's with it off. Last time was all in. And then with it on. Last time was all in. Just kind of like tightens it up a little bit for me. And then, so the EQ is really important. And then I will also always have our Vox on. I usually keep it on while I'm tracking to just give the singer a little bit of extra level boost. But our Vox is kind of a nice plugin because it's just very easy to use and it's hard to mess up. But it just gives you some subtle compression. You could crank it, but I like to sort of have it like around 8 to 10 dB of compression. And I backed the gain off a little bit. So I don't want to slam it too hard because I'm already hitting my Avalon. But if you're doing a more aggressive type of music like hip hop or rock, you can put a compressor like an 1176 style compressor or just whatever stock compressor you have in your DAW and just really slam it with a fast attack and a fast release or a little bit of a slower attack too. If it's more like hip hop or R&B, you want it to be more of a percussive vocal sound. Um, you can do that too. So check this out. Last time was all in. Won't fall for promises. Love thickness over this. So we're just kind of kissing the compressor. So I like that for now. Next, we're going to put some plugins on the actual lead vocal group. So the first thing I'm going to go for is actually a limiter. I put this Renaissance Act, so you can actually use any type of limiter, but I found myself using this. Uh, this is actually for guitars, but it adds some dirt to the vocal too, which I really like to kind of grunge it up. So a few limiters that people use, like a DSP limiter, um, Waves has numerous ones that are great. Your stock limiter should work very well too. There's a lot of different ones, but um, yeah, I'm not doing anything too crazy. I just kind of want to like clamp the vocal down a little bit like in volume wise so to speak so it sort of sits on top of the track i know we're not mixing with the track right now but just so you get an idea of of how all this works i have a limiter here and it's funny limiters are like not a lot of people talk about how to use them in the context of like specific instruments but they're super important for vocals as i would say and guitars as well so if you're looking for good use cases of limiters here you go last time was all in won't fall for promises love thickness over this Just makes everything quite a bit more intimate to my ears so after the limiter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be boosting a bunch of top end. So this Bliss EQ works. So, uh, well, actually, this is like a channel strip, but a lot of mastering EQs are great at this. The Make EQ, M-A-A-G, is really good. Any type of pull tech or uh, tube tech uh, EQ will be really good at adding like the air frequency. So that's kind of like above 10K, basically. But So I have this cranked up here. And this one actually does happen to have a, compress a compressor and some saturation as well. So I have those cranked up. A little bit, but you may not have that depending on the plugin that you have. This is a great like multi-purpose plugin. But here's what that sounds like. So I'll I'll start the audio with it off and then turn it on. Last time was all in. Won't fall for promises. Love thick. So it makes it quite a bit more high fidelity. And for that reason, I'll actually add a little bit of a de-esser afterward too. So I'm using this SPL de-esser. I actually prefer to de-s using Melodyne or just um, doing like audio editing technique where you literally just grab little S's and turn the volume down there. But that's a little outside of the scope of the video. There's a couple different ways. There's a couple schools of thought for dealing with sibilance. And uh, so everyone sort of does it differently. But de-essers work pretty well. You can put them on the individual tracks too, uh, like pretty early on in the chain. But I'm just doing it after this e EQ that's boosting a lot of top and I'm boosting top of my Avalon too so this this vocal is going to be a little overcooked but uh, it should s still sound decent and then after the de-esser I'm going to put uh, multi-band this is super important for getting that modern sounding vocals because essentially this acts as multiple different compressors uh, compressing different frequency ranges uh, differently depending on how you set it up so it can really carve out a lot of a lot of real estate that you can use in your mix and it can also help you really increase the volume as well if you cut out some of those frequencies it'll react differently when the vocal when the the vocal hits different ranges and different notes so it's really useful for that so i'm pulling out bottom and low mids maybe i can move this a little bit over here and i'm also dsing a little bit with the multi-band too so that's a a cool tip you can also ds with multi-band but here's what this sounds like 
This time was all in, won't fall for promises, love sickness over this. So we're carving out some more of those boxy frequencies. So I really like the way that Pro MV works. We can use, there's a bunch of different multi-band compressors out on the market and uh, a lot of them are, are wonderful. So the FabFilter one, just very user friendly. So I recommend starting with that one, but totally up to you. And then lastly, the secret sauce is, uh, I happen to be using Reason Rack, but I love the sound of chorus on my lead vocals. And every all the singers that I work with love it too. So it's not something that I want people to notice that there actually is chorus. So what I'll do is I'll just turn this dry wet up a little bit until you just barely start to notice it. It kind of gives the vocal this like little extra sauce that makes it stand a little bit above the track. Um, it's the best way to explain it. I don't want to hear the detuning happening because basically the chorus like duplicates the, the audio and detunes it a little bit. But just check it out and let me know what you guys think. I, I think it's wonderful. This time was all in, won't fall for promises. So I'll turn it up to like where you can hear it. If it's exaggerated, it sounds like this. This time was all in, won't fall for promises, love sake. I'll just back it down to like 9% where it's barely audible. So, I, you know, they do this a lot in like 90s rock music and stuff. But I think chorus is just an awesome type of sound to have on the lead vocal to really make it stand out and give it that shine without using an EQ. You can use doublers. There's a bunch of different chorus plugins that you can use. All DAW should have one. You can also use delay plugins to do chorus effects too. So that's a fun fact. Like echo boy and those types of plugins they can all do chorus as well so that's my vocal chain for this particular song one other thing i wanted to mention if you're doing a more aggressive style of music like rock metal hip-hop rap whatever you know might need to be a lot more colored uh you should add more saturation and distortion so Kush Audio makes great saturator plugins. DAWs have great saturators that are just in the box. So you just have to watch your level a little bit, but on the track, probably before I compress or anything, I would just throw a saturator. So Ableton Saturator is really great at doing that. So you can just drive it with either tube or like um, preamp style drive to get a little bit of grunge on the vocal. And that'll also help you too if you're working without any outboard gear or analog equipment because you can just get like a little bit of uh, analog saturation going on in your vocals and kind of get rid of that like sterile sounding mic pre sound that you get from, uh, from regular audio interfaces that don't really have a lot of coloration and are just clean. Um, so that's another quick tip. So in this particular vocal, it's not that dirty because it's kind of more of like a pop song but I tend to use a lot of saturation. So especially tube saturation is my favorite. Uh, a couple plugins just off the top of my head. So Native Instruments has a few of them like Byte. That one's a little hard to control. I'd really recommend checking out Black Box by uh, Plugin Alliance. Um, Ableton Saturator is great. Kush Audio has multiple uh, really good ones that emulate different types of preamps. So try that. Uh, can't go wrong with a bunch of saturation on the vocal in my opinion. So. That's all I got for you guys today. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful or not. So I'll keep making uh, more videos and uh, check out my website if you want to get uh, lessons and uh, sessions and stuff like that and a bunch of free downloads with Ableton presets and sample packs and things like that. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.